Dr. Michael Berry has become known as the big short guy amongst the degenerates partaking in the clown casino we call Wall Street. <laughs> 7% here, loss of 37 points. The stock market is now down. <laughs> but to the initiated, there is much more to bury than meets the eye. Infamous for his brazen bet against the housing market around 2008, he will forever go down in history as the man who made Christian Bale famous. Despite being known primarily for the big short, it is his uncanny ability to predict the outcomes of micro and macro events that has pinned his name forever on the god tier list, even if being habitually years early. Barry has never been one to let a good crisis go to waste. Seeing the economy on the verge of collapse, I did the logical thing. I sought to profit from it. And when one does emerge from the shadows, so does he, attempting to warn the deaf ears of their impending doom and to also, in the process, make a ton of money. So you made a ton of money? Made a ton of money. Much more than I ever imagined, you know, I'd ever have. This Chad's talent is evident from his time at school. Blitzing through exams, he receives a master's in both medicine and economics. And he does eventually find his calling. Scion Capital Management is a compounding animal, offering obscene triple-digit returns since its inception. We will dig deeper into Burry's life, his investment style and his hedge fund, which holds many lessons for young investors and specializes in investment scenarios most common folk would not care nor dare to look. Born in San Jose, California, 1971, infant baby back Michael Burry suffers more than most. A retinoplastoma, or eye cancer to you plebs, causes him to lose his left eye at the age of two. This is something his peers never let him forget. They jeer him, taunt him, even his teachers get in on the act. Hey psycho, his coach yells as he walks by. Little do they realize, this brewing Bateman has been granted the greatest gift of them all, a psychopathic work ethic like no one else. But a strong work ethic is not everything. The loss of his eye greatly disrupts Burry's social ability. Instead of having genuine conversations, he must focus on where his eye is looking, stating, if I am looking at you, it is the one time I know I won't be listening to you. This frustrates Burry. Face-to-face -face interactions always leave him with a sour taste. His answer? He says fuck the world and decides to go it alone. You're cool. And fuck you, I'm out. In addition to the whole eye debacle, Burry struggled socially due to Asperger's syndrome. Asperger's syndrome? Yeah, my uncle has Asperger's. Professor Keith Powers wins Crown City Physics Prize. Is he a genius? Sort of, but he has a lot of trouble being around other people. Why? His brain just works differently. What's normal to us can seem really strange to him. Laser focus, detail oriented and hyper intellect. It is these characteristics that have made Asperger's syndrome one of the requirements to become a successful Silicon Valley entrepreneur. I'm actually making history tonight as the first person with Asperger's to host SNL. Michael Burry's autistic brain forces him to be a social pariah but also allows him to learn obsessively. This syndrome becomes key to Burry's success. Autistic level research combined with sheer indefatigability gives him a supreme edge in the stock market. And added to this, he has a fierce competitive streak. And this shows in his youth, where Burry does lots of sports, known for being well built and physically brave. Playing football, Burry hits other players so hard his eye falls out. Disgusting eye infections as a result of it popping out put an end to his fledgling football career. It is swimming where this young gorilla develops the massive back needed by all males aspiring to become dominant silverbacks. And fortunately, friends are not a requirement to be a swimmer. This suits him down to the ground and into the pool. Because friends 
is still not something Burry is blessed with. Burry's unfortunate circumstances would be enough to push most betas off the edge of the cliff. But courage is bestowed on all Giga Chats we portray on this channel, and this one is no exception. In fact, cancer, Asperger's and being socially retarded are all the prerequisites Burry needs to become the Wall Street Bets alpha male of the human species. Before young Burry goes on to make one of the greatest trades of all time, he begins his investing career in a strange way. He starts in the field of medicine. Michael Burry's autistic laser focus and studious nature means that school comes easily to him. After finishing high school at Santa Teresa, he attends UCLA or the University of California Los Angeles for you boomers. At UCLA, he flip-flops between English and economic studies. During his downtime, he picks up some pre-medical training. His special abilities grant him admission to the esteemed medical school Vanderbilt University. He successfully graduates with an MD degree and begins his residency at Stanford University Hospital. It is the late 90s and Chad Burry is bored stiff, as stiff as his new pathology patients. Man, who wrote that joke in the script? It seems he is not at all that interested in practicing medicine and is only there because he didn't find it all that difficult to get in. Medicine either bores or disgusts him, stating, I want to help people, but not really. Consequently, Burry needs a new occupation. Dr. Burry's interest in the stock market begins when he's shown the stock tables at the back of the newspaper by his father. Ironically, his father completely disapproves. He warns his son that the stock market is a crooked place, not to be trusted. This does not obscure baby back Burry's fascination and he decides to learn more about this mythical market. He does so by signing up for Financial Edge through the link in Kevin John's video descriptions. Financial Edge is the number one destination if you are looking to expand your knowledge in finance. Why them? Well, the leading global investment banks, also sometimes called bulge bracket banks, use Financial Edge to upskill their employees. Their courses help you develop a comprehensive understanding of practical skills to enhance your career or excel in interviews. Whether you're an intern, analyst or associate, and my favorite, even if you don't have a finance background, these are great courses to take if you want to start learning about the world of finance and upgrade your earnings potential. They have courses from private equity over portfolio management to my favorite, the investment banker, which offers the same training the top banks use to upskill their workers on accounting, financial modeling, valuation, including DCF and WAC, plus M&A and LBO analysis. There are also a bunch of free resources on their website, so definitely worth checking out. And the best, using my discount code KEVIN25 will give you 25% off any online courses. Click the link in the description below to start upskilling. One night shift, Barry decides to create a threat on techstocks.com to learn more about investing in the real world. Technomania has gripped the market, so his threat on value investing does not garner much interest. It's just like money. You send it by email, they spend it at some of the web's coolest stores, and you come out hip and smart. It's graduation day. Duh. He grows tired of this forum and instead creates his own website, becoming a pioneer of the modern communication method known as the block. It is not long, however, before someone finds him. Wall Street finds him. Michael Burry's father dies and the family receives a small settlement sum. Burry uses this to fund his new endeavor, Scion Capital Management. His mother gives him 20,000 US dollars and his band of brothers throw him 10,000 apiece. Burry then sets the minimum net worth of potential investors at a cool 15 million dollars. As his fund Scion begins to lay down its roots, 
something happens that will push his AUM to the maximum, so the assets under management of his fund. Burry receives a phone call. The caller, none other than famed market wizard Joel Greenblatt. Greenblatt founded Gotham Capital, now Gotham Asset Management, a giant fund that oversees approximately $5.6 billion. Greenblood also co-founded the Value Investors Club, a prestigious website where esteemed investors share their best current trade ideas. Greenblatt is managing principal and co-chief investment officer of Gotham Asset Management, which he founded in 2009, and where he co-manages hedge funds and several hedge fund-like mutual funds utilizing long-short strategies. His early claim to investment fame was at his predecessor firm, Gotham Capital, where he co-managed an extremely concentrated hedge fund with 34% annualized returns over 10 years before he closed it to outside investors because he realized its volatility was too difficult for even sophisticated investors to handle. This is where Greenblatt stumbles upon the brilliant baby back Burry. And Joel Greenblatt offers Burry money for his fund, $1 million. Soon after, investors flock to Burry attempting to throw him money. Having Greenblood as an investor is a real sign of prestige. But Burry turns them away. He is already managing an impressive amount of money. And just a few years after inception, he is running a tidy sum of money. $600 million to be more precise. It is around this time that Burry gets his sick taste for bubbles and he bets against high-flying tech stocks in 2000. The S&P is down big following the popping of the dot-com mania, while Big Chad Burry is up a comical 50% in his first year of management. He repeats this feat the following year and like everything except social interactions, running tons of money seems to come so easily for him. But Michael Burry's next stunt makes this stuff look like child's play. Burry is about to... Michael Burry's autistic brain knows no bounds and it is this trait that leads him to stumble upon the greatest trade of all time. A trade so great that it will inspire the writer of the greatest Wall Street book of all time, which in turn will inspire the producer of the greatest Wall Street movie of all time, which then in turn will inspire the greatest investment banker Wall Street has ever seen, Patrick Bateman. But back to Burry. For fun, this lunatic decides to study the real estate mortgage market and its operations. One day in 2005, casually scanning through the most boring reports ever written, he finds something fishy. Bear in mind, these reports are so boring that nobody else have ever read them. Not even the person that put them together. It appears to him that the mortgage market and thus the entire US real estate market is built on a pillar of sand. A big, fat, juicy bubble if you will. Burry's academic conclusion came to be that the banks and lenders have gotten their hands on some high-grade Colombian bam bam and have completely lost their minds. The rampant drug use has caused egregious economic excess and the market is out of whack. Chad Michael also stumbles upon CDOs. That's a type of derivative that allows banks to clump loans together and then they sell them to the highest bidder. And you would have to be as high as a kite to buy this garbage. Okay, I'm a chef on a Sunday afternoon setting the menu at a big restaurant. I ordered my fish on Friday, which is the mortgage bond that Michael very shorted. But some of the fresh fish doesn't sell. I don't know why, maybe it just came out, halibut has the intelligence of a dolphin. So, what am I gonna do? Throw all this unsold fish, which is the triple B level of the bond, in the garbage and take the loss? No way. Being the crafty and morally onerous chef that I am, whatever crappy levels of the bond I don't sell, I throw into a seafood stew. See, it's not old fish, it's a whole new thing. And the best part is, they're eating three-day-old halibut. That. CDO. Wall Street loves to bundle things up in nice little packages. And everything is wrapped up in a neat little package. This meant that in technical terms, the banks were scooping piles of shit into an even bigger pile of shit. And then 
selling it on to investors. Gift wrapped with a beautiful pink bow on top. Burry smells this steaming turd and in his genius figures out a way to bet against the greatest pile of shit the planet has ever seen. That is one big pile of shit. Burry is going all in on credit default swaps. Credit default swaps. He conceives that they are going to invent on Wall Street credit default swaps on subprime mortgages, essentially insurance contracts on the bonds, before they even do. And he helps, he participates in the creation of this instrument. And Michael Berry is the first one in. It's 2007 and the party is in full swing over at Goldman Sachs. Easy money is still flowing and bearish commentators are quickly shot down. How are the consumers served by having the value of their money, the value of their wages and their savings diminished? I don't think that that has any impact. The Fed doesn't have any impact on that at all. The world is struggling to find out how to deal with the crisis, but there is no housing bubble inside yet. And Burry has another problem. It appears that Burry, being the psychopath that he is, has made his trade too large for the fund. Perhaps I had made the trade too big for the fund. My, my confidence in the trade had uh, ticked off some people. Investors in his fund like Greenblood are starting to realize what he has done. And they are pissed. I'm pissed now! After some conflict, they decide to pull the plug and their money out of the fund. They have no confidence that the deal will be successful, because the housing market still seems to be doing fine. As you can imagine, Chad Burry is not a fan of their decision. So, he pushes the emergency lockdown button, legally blocking outgoing transactions. This seizes control of the money and locks it in the fund. Not surprisingly, his partners are furious and threaten to sue him. Even though he's under so much pressure, Burry's confidence in the trade means that he has no choice but to let the trade play out. Ironically, Wall Street legend Joel Greenblatt, the man who gave Michael Burry his big break, is now being told to kindly fuck off. I'm gonna pay you $100 to fuck off. It's late 2007 and the housing market is still intact. It has not crashed. Burry is either wrong or we are living in the golden age of fraud. The trade looks doomed. September 29th, 2008. The day will go down in history to mark the great financial crisis. Just as our hero predicted, the market is burning down all around him. Panic on the streets of New York. Not in generations has Wall Street absorbed the number of body blows it took today. The American financial system is rocked to its foundation as top Wall Street institutions topple under a mountain of debt. When you step back for just a moment and consider the events uh, of the last few days, it is truly unbelievable. The roots of the crisis can be traced back years earlier, when the number of risky subprime mortgages skyrocketed. Large institutions are shot down overnight. Lehman Brothers down, Bear Stearns down, AIG government bailout. The global real estate bubble is bursting at the seams and people all over the world are losing their homes. So I think this is the most significant financial crisis in the post-war period. There are fears the sell-off will continue on Wall Street. Soaring gas prices, falling home prices, and rising unemployment. What kind of recipe is that? Overall, that's a recipe for a recession. They also lose their beachfront holiday homes in Marbella and their off-plan condos in Bulgaria. Like watching a plane crash. It is not fun and nobody is laughing. 0.7% here, loss of 37 points or so. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. We're down by between 3 and 4.5% generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're down over 16%. Dow at the same time has fallen about 18%. The stock market is now down 21%. Nobody is laughing except Michael J. Burry, who is laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> Not only did his prediction come true, he makes a ton of money, 725 million to be exact. 
his overall return for the fund reaches a retarded 489%. Burry's bet is so brazen that even after winning tens of millions for his investors, they are still extremely upset. At this point, no matter the great performance, the relationship with Burry's investors is damaged. And so, a big chapter comes to an end. Burry closes Scion Capital Management. So Kevin, how do I become a Wall Street alpha male serving up absurd returns year over year? Well young brethren, first you must go to your dealer and purchase a big bag of autism. Having achieved this, head to your local library and take out a book on value investing. Maybe securities analysis or Buffett's famous letters to shareholders. Then you must religiously subscribe to the tried and tested margin of safety strategy. Does this sound boring to you? Maybe you should just give Bill Wong a call and organize brunch. Be a great investor. Excellent. <laughs> Burry has stated that he does not take breaks in his search for value and sheer outrageous value is enough of a catalyst for him to do a deep dive into a company's fundamentals. Deep fucking value. Even better again if he is horrified and disgusted by the state of affairs. He calls this concept ick investing and it allows him to find the creative and unique opportunities for which he is notorious and Chad Burry's style is very difficult to replicate because of the frequency he trades in and out of positions. Just like his swimming days, he is quick to jump into a stock that fits his criteria. Outrageous value, trading within 15% of its 52-week low, preferably in a battered and bruised industry. If the stock sinks to a new 52-week low, he will sell without hesitation and cut all losses. This style makes Burry one of the most active value investors on the blockchain. And sometimes he even sells out of every position in his portfolio. You too can be like Mike if you also possess the uncanny ability to return like Gandalf and warn the masses about bubbles the size of Mount Doom. Better again if you can call the top and ride your shorts all the way down to the bottom. Oh, and you must possess balls. We're talking serious cojones to hold your position even when the whole world is against you. I believe that agricultural land, productive agricultural land with water on site is will be very valuable in the future and i've put a good amount of money into that burry sees big changes happening in the world over the next few decades as is evident by his current investment strategy almond farms water and even gold have entered the chat so you know paulson's big in gold he is also bullish on nuclear power much to the annoyance of the green energy coalition of betas no one knows what the future holds, but this giga monster probably has a fair idea and his advice will remain the same. D-Y-O-R Over the course of the pandemic era, Chad Michael Burry has become quite the celebrity. He regularly voices his opinions on Twitter and even more regularly deletes his account. No joke, he seems to delete his account a couple of times a year and then magically reappears again after some time. I'm back. When market bubbles are in the mania stage, Burry is public enemy number one and is called out for being a perma bear. As markets start to implode, however, he becomes the voice of reason amongst delusional bullishness. The media runs wild and uses his snippets of wisdom to write bearish articles. From this, a new type of contrarian market indicator has emerged. The so-called Burry Sentiment Indicator that has replaced CNN's shitty old Fear Greed Index. It is simple. When Burry is extremely unpopular, it means the market is overheated and gives investors a bearish signal. When Burry is trending, it means that the market is fearful and oversold, thus giving investors a reason to be bullish. Burry likens himself to a modern day Cassandra, the Trojan priestess who uttered prophecies but was never to be believed. Cassandra's most recent predictions have played out so far. Nailed inflation. 
called out the crypto leverage mania and he managed to short Apple right at the tip top by buying Apple puts somewhere around here. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah. But like many bulking silverbacks, the good doctor is not without its detractors. Most recently drawing criticism from none other than the dean of valuation himself, Aswad the Motoran. The Dean states that Burry should have retired after the big short was released. He feels Burry was lucky to be in the right place at the right time, making him look like some kind of expert. You know what, Michael should have retired after the 2008 <laughs> crash, when, right after the big short came out. The problem with market gurus is they take themselves too seriously. They act like, I mean, it, it, let's face it, you're in the right place at the right time, you look like a market expert. And I think there are people who think deeply about markets. Michael Burry is not one of them. So I think that to even respond to a comment by him is giving him more value, more, uh, more respect than he truly does deserve. Demodoran, among other academics, feels Dr. Mike is given far more respect than he deserves. But surely the guy running a billion dollar hedge fund knows what he is doing. You remember Jesus saying, my father is working, therefore I'm working. So God is working, Jesus is working, and I'm working. working. Among other notable beefs is none other than our Lord and Savior, Reverend Elon Musk. What started out as mutual respect between the two has turned sour, each publicly taking jibes at each other on Twitter. Burry has taunted Tesla devotees with digs such as enjoy it while it lasts and soon the competition will come for Tesla. He has also criticized the fact that Tesla's earnings primarily come from government subsidies paid for by people who don't even drive the cars. Lord Elon retorted by calling Burry a broken clock. Kathy Wood also chimed in, stating Burry doesn't understand the fundamentals driving innovation. Whatever that means. This beef continues and the winner shall be crowned during the main event of next year's Wrestlemania 39. But the question we really want to know is... In the recent quarterly 13F super filings, Michael Burry sold out of every stock bar one. So the SEC 13F form is basically a quarterly report that's required to be filed by all institutional investment managers. and these investment managers have at least 100 million dollars under management and then the form discloses their holdings and provides insights into moves that these big boys are making in the market. Burry's wild move sparked a lot of speculation within finance media as to why? Why did he sell all of his stock except for one? He still had $3 million in Geo Group Inc, a corporation that invests in private prisons and mental health facilities. Geo is a recurring trade for Burry and he knows when it is overvalued. It seems he buys in when the stock falls under $6 and I am willing to bet he has already sold out now that the price has jumped above $8, giving him a nice and tidy 25% return. This means he potentially has zero stocks in his portfolio. Why did he do this? He is simply putting his money where his mouth is. Big Chad Burry believes that the market may crash another 50% before the year ends. His thesis is based on earnings compression. He believes the weakening consumers will result in a big loss in net profit for companies in the third and fourth quarters. Thus, stonks only go down. Added to this is a hawkish Federal Reserve commencing quantitative tightening. Burry, along with many other hedge fund bait mans, believes this to be mega bearish. He has seen this all before and believes that we are in late stage 2007 all over again. In other words, Hold on to your hats! You're about to get pounded! So should you liquidate all your positions and head for the bunker with cans of tuna? Not so fast. This is a very personal decision that deserves a private answer. Let me help you a little. There are a few questions you need to ask yourself before you make any drastic moves. But you must be brutally honest, no bullshit. Number 1. Have you calculated the fair value of the business using a DCF model? 
or at least asked someone who knows how to do it. A discounted cash flow model allows investors to calculate what shares are really worth and how much they should be willing to pay as used by all the great value guys. If you do not know what this is and you just bought a stock because you saw the ticker on someone's Twitter handle, then you should probably sell. Or call George Soros, whom I have also portrayed by the way. Number two, are you financially okay if your investment goes completely wrong? Have you taken a loan from Grandpa Joe and poured the money into Tesla's stock last month while at the same time receiving welfare checks? If you answered yes to this, then my advice would be to sell those Elon tokens before poor old Grandpa Joe gets booted out of that lovely retirement complex. Number three, are you taking investment advice from ARK CEO Kathy Wood? If yes, then for fuck's sake, man, sell it all now. Sell it all. On the other hand, if you have spotted some outrageous value in a company with good long-term prospects, you may hold. And if you have dug into the company's financials and dug deeper into the management team and are pleased, you may hold. And if you don't give a shit if the market plummets 50%, then congratulations. You probably do not need to be taking investment cues from some online bait mans on YouTube. For a multi-millionaire giga chat, Michael Burry keeps it low key. He lives with his family in California. He pursues his love for heavy metal music and plays the drums. It takes a true beast to not only accept all of life's challenges put before them, but to dominate across all aspects of it is a different story. The word genius is thrown around far too often these days, but that word alone does not do Burry complete justice. Sheer brilliance combined with astonishing courage and a passion for finding and speaking the truth. Michael Burry truly is one of the most revered silverbacks in the jungle. In a galaxy far, far away, Burry is warning the Martian media via hologram of their impending economic downturn and outrageous speculation in laser probe technology. And they do not listen to him either. It remains to be seen if the prophet's predictions ring true, but if you ask me, I would bet the house on Dr. Michael Burry.